Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm taking a look at the other uniform that came with the April Fool's mid-month, which is Squirrel Girl's premium uniform. This uniform is only available during this event with the store tokens, so that will probably turn away a lot of players, but either way, I'll cover what the uniform can do in PvE and PvP to give you an idea of how good it is and whether it will bring any value to your account and whether you would maybe want to pick it up or not. This is pretty much Squirrel Girl's first uniform. She does have another one, but it doesn't really do anything for her besides just changing the aesthetics of the character, whereas this one actually makes her a functional character. So if you do get this uniform, you basically have another usable character on your roster. Unless otherwise stated, all the testing that I did with Squirrel Girl initially was with no damage proc, Later on, I do end up using a Mighty Destruction, but I make that clear when that part of the video starts. The new uniform basically makes Squirrel Girl a top-end PvE character. She gets a ton of offensive stats, such as damage accumulation, all defense down that ignores immunity, chain hit damage, damage versus universal characters, as well as a bunch of self-buffs. The character also has paralysis that ignores immunity on two skills that lasts for three seconds. So if you rotate between those skills, you can basically lock down characters that aren't immune to CC effects, such as the regular world bosses. You can see in this first clip that even at T2 and without being able to leverage those CC effects, since Thanos is immune, she's able to beat stage 99 with almost two minutes and 30 seconds left. For a comparison with some of the other characters that I've tested, ones that are good for PvE have finished this stage with about a minute left, or maybe a minute and a half, so anything above that means that the character is pretty solid for PvE, as she is. Versus Proxima, she's able to take down stage 99 in under 60 seconds, which is funny because some characters can't do that even after they're awakened or have become T3. After I unlocked the T3, she was able to complete the same stage about 30 seconds faster, and then similarly versus Proxima, she completed about 30 seconds faster as well, completing the entire stage in roughly 30 seconds outright. It's very likely that with a damage proc, she might have been able to one-shot either of these bosses in seconds. Because World Boss Legend is sort of the marker now for how good a character performs in PvE, I obviously had to test her there, and I did my standard test, as I do with all characters, taking her into a stage 9 of Null without using a leadership or support to see how quickly she can complete the stage. The general consensus I found is that if a character can complete the stage with about 2 minutes and 40 seconds to 2 minutes and 50 seconds left, it's a good indicator that the character is strong for PvE. With Squirrel Girl, I was actually able to skip some of the cutscenes or animations in the fight and finish the stage with 3 minutes and 40 seconds left, which is a really good indicator that the character is really good for PvE and above average compared to the rest. Funny enough, I was actually able to complete this stage faster than Thanos with his latest uniform, but that was before he got buffed, and now that he is buffed, I'm pretty sure that they're closer to on par when Thanos is just at level 70, and obviously when Thanos gets upgraded further, he easily eclipses Squirrel Girl's latest uniform. So if you want to build the character for PvE, you basically have two options. You can either use a CTP of Rage, since the character is also a speed villain and has a bunch of cancel effects, so you can leverage her on the speed villain day for ABX content, and I'm pretty sure that she does pretty well there as well, as you'll see in the clips following. Otherwise, you can also build the character with a single skill damage proc, because the character is actually really proc friendly and really easy to play. If you want to get some hybrid use out of the character like I did, a CTP of Destruction is a great choice, because the character doesn't have any penetration, which the Destruction provides, and if you're able to reforge the Destruction into a Mighty at least, you can get the top proc to be a Strike one, which will improve your performance in PvE as well. She wasn't able to complete stage 29, though she did get pretty close with about 4 health bars left, so I'd say that if there was about 15 or 20 seconds more, she would have been able to complete this stage entirely. And overall, I'd say that the character is basically on par with Kamala Khan and Shuri. 
I would say that she is actually better than them since they were able to complete stage 29 with leadership and supports with about a minute left, but they also had the help of White Fox, whereas Squirrel Girl can't leverage that and she is almost able to complete stage 29 without those supports and leaderships. Using a leadership and support this time, I tried to push to stage 59 to see if she could complete that, but unfortunately she was about a minute short from completing the first phase in that two minute window to be able to beat the fight entirely, so she wasn't able to do it. But with a damage proc, it should be able to shave off at least a minute, which is the next test that I did with a mighty destruction. So you can see that with the proc this time around, I was able to finish the first phase in around a minute and 40 seconds. And then that faster clear time at the beginning allowed me to clear the entire fight with around 30 seconds left. Versus stage 44 of Mephisto, she does have the benefit of a type advantage. However, without a damage proc, she wasn't really able to complete this fight since it took her longer than a minute and 20 seconds to complete the first phase and you generally have to complete it within 60 seconds to be able to complete the fight entirely. With that mighty destruction though, she's able to complete the first phase in around 30 seconds this time, and then complete the entire fight with almost two minutes left, or around a minute and 50 seconds roughly. For Alliance Battle Legend on the Speed Female Day, you have better options such as Black Widow and Shadow Shell, However, if you don't have those characters geared up or leveled up with their latest uniforms and you want to try Squirrel Girl, if you want to get an idea, I was able to score around 1.5 million, which is obviously not great, but that is without a damage proc. So if you're able to get something like Destruction, you could probably bump that up to closer to 2.5 or 3 million. And then with the Rage, you should be able to go even higher than that, probably closer to 3.5, maybe even 4. Squirrel Girl does have a ton of the cancel effects for both Alliance Battle Legend and ABX, so you can leverage her in both using something like CTP of Rage. I'm pretty sure that Green Goblin can already cap this speed villain day for ABX, so this uniform might not be as necessary, but I was able to score around 8.5 million, again with no damage proc, so with a single skill damage proc, probably would have been closer to 9.5 or maybe 10 and then again with rage you likely will be able to cap out with her with a good build and a good rotation the general rotation for squirrel girl is really easy you essentially just want to cancel the first and second skill when you have them to try to fill up your ultimate faster and then from there you simply just do a five cancel four cancel three and the third skill is the one that you want to proc on since it also has the single skill proc for the third skill itself. Once you have access to your ultimate skill, you simply use that first and you delay cancel it, and then you go back into the regular rotation of five, cancel four, cancel three. With the Mighty Destruction, I was able to easily beat the first phase of Dormammu in under two minutes, which is the amount needed to complete the entire fight, and actually almost did it in under a minute, which shows you just how strong the character is on the PvE side. On the PvP side, Squirrel Girl is actually pretty decent. She has a lot of iframes, which means that her survival is pretty good if the opponent doesn't have a lot of iframe ignore. And she also rotates through her skills pretty regularly, leaving a lot of CC effects and a lot of lingering damage on the field. She's obviously not a PvP meta character and is limited to how good she can be because she doesn't have some of the staple effects that are needed to be really strong there. She doesn't have iframe ignore or penetration built into her kit, but she does have a lot of other good effects like guaranteed dodge, damage mitigation, as well as a heal of 70% when she gets down low and heals back up to almost full. As you can see from this clip, with an invincible build, she does really well versus mid-level characters since they can't really hit her when she's in iframe and then when she comes out of it she also has the benefit of the invincible meaning it's really hard for them to take her out when they can barely actually hit the character. Although an invincible build will help Squirrel Girl perform more consistently versus mid-level characters, if you want a chance at beating the higher meta characters that have more health and the potential to burst you down faster, then a CTP of Destruction would be a better option in my opinion, since you 
really want to prioritize taking them out quicker before they start to get going and potentially one shot you back. One of the reasons that I recommend a destruction, besides the fact that she doesn't have penetration in her kit, is that the character iframes a lot, so her survival isn't really that bad, especially if you're facing opponents that don't have iframe ignore or a short cooldown on their iframe ignore skill. And in addition to that, her skill priority is actually pretty good. She usually opens with the third skill, which is a partial iframe, almost the full iframe. And then after that goes into the fifth skill and fourth skill, meaning that even if the opponent takes her out when she's in her third skill and iframes, the lingering damage that the fifth and fourth provides can potentially proc and take out the opponent too. She obviously won't be used in timeline, but in Alliance Conquest, she does have some value. You can see from this particular clip that just using her and a debuff leadership and some support giving her a little bit of extra health that she was able to completely solo this fight versus Null, Falcon, and Black Bolt. You can see that even versus some characters that have an iframe ignore and even a type advantage versus her, if you're able to quickly burst them down with that destruction, you can win the fight. Unfortunately, one of the kind of not so great things about Squirrel Girl is that she is a tier 3 and not an awakened character. If she was awakened, she would have easily been able to complete the second fight, but unfortunately ended up dying to Juggernaut's type advantage and iframe ignore. Even though Squirrel Girl might not be able to win the fights she's in, especially versus meta characters, she should be able to at least wipe some characters out with that quick proc and the third skill. Keep in mind that even though Squirrel Girl doesn't have a type advantage versus universal types, because she's obviously speed, she does gain universal damage from her uniform, which means that you can use her versus opponents that are universal type, and if they don't have a lot of iframe ignore or have long cooldowns on them or potentially don't use them often, she is a good counter versus them. You can see in this clip as well though, once she does face opponents that have frequent iframes that she doesn't really stand much of a chance and it's really unfortunate because if she was awakened she would be so much better for Alliance Conquest. The fact that her skill priority is so high on that third skill and that she has so many different iframe skills and ones that are even full iframes the fifth and the second skill being full ones is really awesome because she can basically take down the Black Order by herself, including Corvus's two lives. As you can see again, she will struggle versus the second set, and you can try to mitigate that by putting a character that is awakened in the top set to be able to wipe them out with their awakening skill. Because I wasn't able to include Thanos' performance at T4 in Alliance Battle Legend and Alliance Conquest, I also included that footage here at the end of this video. I was able to score around 3.2 million with just one support on the Alien Universal Day, which means that with a CTP of Rage, you should be able to exceed 5 million or even 6 million with the character and get all the rewards for that particular day. With the no restriction setup and an additional support, I was able to get to the 4 million range, which means that with a CTP of Rage, you're likely to hit somewhere in the 7 to 8 million score. For those that focus on Alliance Battle Legend, he will be more easily able to outscore Loki and is essentially meta for the Universal Villain Day. If you're still unsure about Thanos' new uniform in Alliance Conquest, I've noticed that he still can end up dying versus characters that have high burst damage at the start of the fight, such as characters like Hulk, Spider-Man, and sometimes Jean Grey, depending on the team that you use. But for the general team setup that you have for Thanos, which is more often than not going to be with Colossus and Hela or some other kind of supports, when you get Thanos to T4, he does end up getting enough of a stat increase and survival increase where you can potentially proc that steel CTP of authority, which is more than likely what you should be using for the character, and improve his survival enough to survive the first initial encounter and then basically one-shot the opponents afterwards. You might have noticed in my Thanos video that I didn't actually have too much testing of Thanos when he was at level 70 or even 80 with this uniform because he just ended up dying pretty much all the time versus these meta characters like Hulk, Spider-Man, Carnage, and Jean Grey. However, once I tested him now when he became T4, 
he didn't really have as much difficulty defeating these teams as he did previously and i think again that's largely due to the fact that he gets enough of a stat increase where he can potentially tank that first encounter and it makes it a lot easier to be able to take out the opponents afterwards because he also gets the damage accumulation from the CTP of Authority filled up. Again, it's hard to say how good this is compared to the old uniform as I would have to test that a whole bunch as well. However, I did notice that it does become more consistent once you take the character to T4, which could also be the case with the old uniform too. One of the other things that I didn't really cover with Squirrel Girl's uniform is that she does become one of the best supports for Thanos, providing him with up to 60% additional damage versus bosses. However, for most of the game modes, you're not really going to be able to use that because of the restrictions in place, considering that Squirrel Girl is a speed villain type and... Thanos is a universal villain type. Aside from that, I think the uniform is a great upgrade for her and a really solid addition for most players. However, since it is a premium uniform, I wouldn't really recommend it to most, especially if you are able to get access to Kamala Khan's latest uniform or Shuri's latest uniform. But for people that really like Alliance Conquest, I think she is a solid addition there and basically performs just as well in PvE, especially if you use her with a CTP of Destruction. A bunch of people have told me that they're still uncertain on whether to pick up Thanos' new uniform or not, and the best advice that I can give to kind of boil it down is that the new uniform is more centered around PvE. So if your focus is more on PvE content, then it is a good pickup, but it depends on how often you get uniforms. If you don't get them too often, then it's not likely going to give you too much value because it will probably get replaced at some point in the future, meaning that the more time that passes, the less value that it will kind of provide you. On the PvP side, the new uniform does better offensively, but arguably not as well defensively or in terms of survival so the old uniform can do just as well for you if your cards have enough offensive stats on them i would say that if you don't have enough kind of pierce maybe like under 15 percent or something like that or maybe you have under maybe say 70 percent all attack or attack stats in total then the new uniform might actually provide you a pretty good bump there but you also have to keep in mind that Thanos may likely be replaced in the future for things like timeline. So if that's your focus for Thanos's uniform, then it won't be really as good there because that usually gets swapped out pretty often every few months or so. Hopefully those insights made it a little bit more clear whether people want to pick up these two uniforms. I'm not going to tell people outright whether to get them or not, since it really depends on a lot of factors like their current account and what they're willing to spend to get the uniforms. I can only really provide you with the information and that really comes down to you whether you want to get them or not. Hopefully you liked this video and found it useful. If you do, please consider liking so I know, maybe sharing it with others so it helps them out, and subscribing so it helps my channel grow and I can make more videos like this. As always, I appreciate people taking the time to watch my videos, so thank you, but the video is now over.